And moving down to the spray bar, all Atenire spray bars are controlled one foot at a time, which means there's one air cylinder for every one foot of spray bar, which is in correlation to the one switch for that cylinder inside the cab. The spray bar also has a unique breakaway feature to it, which takes just a quarter inch grade two soft bolt. We don't want a hardened bolt in here because if your operator would happen to hit something with this wing, this wing will now pivot forward or backwards and shear this bolt. If we put a hardened bolt in here, we run the risk of damaging this circulating tube when somebody would run into somebody. And trust me, it will happen. Every wing is set up with a safety switch. So if we would raise our wing while we were spraying, or we left our wing up only to spray the center, the safety switch would make the connection so that our wing would not come on and accidentally spray any vehicles. It is the safest procedure though if you are going to have a wing up in the air to physically shut the switches off for every one of these cylinders that you're not using in the cab that will take the safety switch out of the circuit so we don't have to worry about accidentally making this connection. This bar has a bifold which we call it. It has two sets of folding joints um, you have one cylinder here and one here, so as our bar, if we would add bar, we can crown this spray bar by the adjustments on the cylinder. On our spray bar valves, we have three nozzles for every one foot. We can physically turn off some of these valves. In some instances, we might want to do that if we were shooting tack or something like that to save from changing different nozzles. But in normal operation, we would want to get triple overlap coverage. We would want all three nozzles engaged at all times. So we would leave them hooked up like that. Let's look at the, the guts of our system. This is the asphalt pump drive system. We start with a hydraulic motor that is driving a gearbox so we get more torque out of the motor to drive the Etnire exclusive asphalt pump. So this is all direct coupled. We take the gearbox and we are self lubricating it from the return oil of the hydraulic motor. So there's no reason to have to check the oil in this gearbox. The computer is reading a sensor inside of this, a ring gear inside of this motor, is sending a signal back to our computer which is telling us in turn how fast our asphalt pump is turning in gallons per minute. Down below this are two rotary actuators. These rotary actuators control the four-way valve. It's a unique valve that allows the asphalt that goes through our asphalt pump into that valve to be diverted either back to our tank in circulating tank, into our spray bar in circulating spray bar, or to spray when we go to the spray mode. That's all done with one valve and two rotary actuators. Above the asphalt pump, this strainer box has a suction valve in it, which is nothing more than an open and closed valve for our tank. This unit has an optional front suction so that when this one opens, we're drawing material from the front of this tank. Under this cover, these strong arms come off. There is a full length strainer the size of this box that's corrugated like a piece of cardboard. It's made out of mesh. So all of the foreign materials in your asphalt will get caught in this strainer. It's a very simple strainer to change. By removing these strong arms, this plate will come off, which has a reusable gasket on the back of this plate. You can pull the strainer out, clean the strainer, and put it back in. So it's a very simple process to be able to clean the debris out of your oil. This unit is equipped with two flues with our standard LPG burners. These are a million BTUs a piece. We have a lower burner and an upper burner. And if you'd refer to your operations manual, there'll be a oil limit to make sure that we have enough oil to cover these tubes before you ever light these burners. We have to have material in the tank before we operate the burners. But they're a very simple burner to operate. We have an LP tank on the other side of the truck that we'll show you. You open your dampers as we explained. You open your LP tank. You can come back here and with this valve completely closed or clockwise, have this valve set also and this one closed. Once you light, open the LP tank, we can then light this burner 
and it'll give you a pilot flame and then to make it a warmer flame or a hotter flame you can open this valve. If I need to use the upper burner then I turn this valve on positively, light it, now I can open the flame by using this thumb valve also. We set the pressure regulator on our LP system around 20 PSI depending on the tank size. Larger tanks may take a little more PSI but normally about 20 PSI is what we set that at. This truck is equipped as standard equipment with a sample valve. Many state agencies will require a sample of the oil material that's in the tank and we would like to take that directly out of the tank. So a person can open this valve with this can, be able to take a sample out and then close this off and the product would come directly out of the tank. This unit is also equipped with an optional hose reel for our hand spray hose. This is a manual crank reel that would wind up the three-quarter inch hand spray hose. Back here on the back, this unit has an optional bar soaking box or soaking box. We can store tools in here. We can put some diesel fuel in here to rinse our nozzles out and stuff. It's just a nice way to be carrying extra parts. It's also equipped with a quick coupler here, which is where we plug our wash down wand in, which with an electric fuel pump from the controls will pump diesel fuel from our fuel tank back here to where we can wash and clean this unit up right here on site.